Ahead of the governorship election in Imo State, the factional leadership of the Labour Party in the state says it's been strategic in its efforts to take over power from the All Progressive Congress led state government. Confusion trailed the governorship primary of the Labour Party in Imo State as three factions held the party's primary election in different locations in the state. Ten of the aspirants settled for the landmark event centre at New Owiri with their delegates for the election, while three other aspirants held their elections differently along MCC Road, Urata, in Owiri, North's local government area. Joining us live to discuss this is Nze Akujobi Ikechuku Cyril. He is the Imo State Chairman of the Labour Party. He's apparently the factional chairman. Thank you so much, Nze, for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for having me. It's interesting that the Labour Party that many would have made reference to as the third force uh, or more like a, a saviour of sorts uh, in terms as, as far as political parties go would not be found in this kind of um, imbroglio. But uh, this is the case where we've had parallel primaries held uh, for the same elections. Explain to me why this came to be. Uh, I thank you very much for the question. But I must confess, it is very, very unfortunate. Uh, all these issues, I will tell you, is from the national executive, the former national executive that were overwhelmed by the sources of the Labour Party. Uh, you know, in sources, you have to be able to manage it. Otherwise, you will have problems with it. So that's the only thing I have to say for now. But further, if I must say something about it, our former national chairman, Barrister Chilo Sapure, messed the system up, and that is the problem we're going through today. But we are trying to do a kind of a crisis management. Thank God uh, he shot himself on the feet, and the uh, uh, Court of Competent Jurisdiction told him to step aside. And the National Working Committee, in their wisdom, raised another person, somebody I would call a godsend, to redeem the image of the party. And that is what we have been going through since then. Thank you very much. How is this addressing the situation in the party? Because from what we know, or what has been reported in the news, we had a, you had a four-way um, parallel primary. And so whether we like it or not, even though it might be that the court has allowed you to contest this election, there are still people who have frayed nerves. There are people who are unhappy with the system. As you have clearly stated, that this might be a problem from the top. But now that the top has fixed someone new, how is he addressing the issues? And of course, trying to mend fences. Is there any such thing happening right now? If I understand you very well, you mean what is the fate of the Imo State? Uh, Labour Party in general, yes. Uh, having been clearly stated by the Court of Court Contest Jurisdiction in Bayas and Imo State that Alaji Bashira Papa is the authentic uh, acting national chairman, it simply means, which they have voiced out as well, that uh, Chief Ike Chuku Joseph Ukebu is the authentic candidate of Labour Party in Imo State, having emerged from the primaries of 16th of uh, April 2023, which was conducted by the National Working Committee led by Elijah Papa, and not the one on the 15th, which was conducted by the Abure-led executive. So now having caught that one clear, uh, and uh, having advised INEC to do the needful, we are a camp party now, even though in one of the uh, press conferences I gave, I said I'm, I've come to reconcile those aggrieved people, because I know that people are aggrieved. Uh, you cannot uh, pay 25 million naira and the things went the other way around and you'll be happy. Uh, but I'm working hard to make sure that I reconcile everybody, uh, because election is a let's go team, not a one man business if if, I so if all of us are coming together i assure you that uh, in little than no time labor party must stay to be an enviable party that will win this election come november 11 2023 
I always like to, and do not take this the wrong way, if you are, as a party, do not necessarily have your house in order, how are you able to convince the average voter, who obviously might not necessarily be having it good, I mean, we'll get to talking about what's happening in Imo State in a few minutes, but how do you, um, you know, try to get the average voter, convince them to vote for you when your house is on fire? In fact, as, as far as I'm concerned, we are doing our best because uh, the Labour Party executive people, they are coming together to do justice to the reconciliation agenda we have. And I believe uh, you people in the media, uh, you will help us to, to, like this interview I'm granting now, uh, you help us to air it so that people will sincerely see the truth. Like me, you know the problem is that when you don't know what is inside the house and you come and start operating from outside, you mess everything up. I joined the Labour Party in 2014. Even before then, I've been a sympathizer of the Labour Party. But I officially joined 2014. And I've been consistent with the party. Then somebody cannot just come today and tell me that uh, he will know the constitution or the runnings of the party more than me. And this, uh, our present acting national chairman, joined this party inception. They are the inaugural members of the Labour Party 20, since 2002. So nobody will say he's a new person or he just came from the blue. Even Abura himself joined a little ago before me. He joined around the 2007. He has been a, a member, but I'm not envying him for being the national chairman, but he messed everything up. That's why this thing. And a court of competent jurisdiction in a city in Abuja, Federal Capital Territory, said you are restrained from parading yourself and the three others. And he still continues in misleading uh, his cohort and uh, his uh, uh, followers. That is what is causing the problem. But I think in little than no time, like he has seen the truth and uh, he's facing his case now. Everybody will know that the uh, Labour Party is in peace and uh, we don't have distractions again. Let's talk about the capabilities of uh, the Labour Party in Imo State. As we know, the Imo State obviously um, has its own fair share of troubles. Uh, Imo State does have um, a sitting governor who is of the um, ruling party. You also have, of course, candidates from other political parties uh, that would be up against the, you know, the Labour Party. So my question is, um, how do you hope to surmount all of this? Because uh, like you started at the beginning to say that the Labour Party's success um, is what has somewhat become its destruction. I didn't quite understand what you meant by success. Is it the success of its spread um, and, you know, the following? Or what exactly were you talking about? And how will this play out in Imo State in terms of getting the votes of the people? Uh, the true position in Imo State, if I understand what you mean, is that uh, there is no gain saying that the citizens of Imo State are not happy. You cannot go to your house and sleep and uh, close your eyes. And uh, even operating the roads, you are not safe. Of uh, you are not sure of getting to your house from one point to the other because of the killings and the bloodletting and whatever, whatever. So. We are telling the people we can do it. And they know that the Labour Party, being a social democratic party, is a human based party. You know, like our, this thing is, uh, our slogan is uh, Papa Mama Pekin, and it's enshrined in our logo. So we are a human uh, uh, based uh, party. We want to work for Imo state people and we want to show them how governance should be run. But the issue is that uh, the incumbent, you don't uh, underrate the powers of the incumbency. We, we respect him for that. But the truth is that these people want to know what you do for them. And we know what we can do for them. And that is what we are telling them. We want to uh, at least put him a state in a state that people will believe tomorrow. People will hope to see tomorrow. Not just being afraid of what will happen tomorrow. So... Hunger is killing people in Imo State. Apart from hunger, you are not safe in your house. Some areas in Imo State, even in that alone zone that the incumbent is from, some houses have been 
uh, uh, bamboos and the, the, the citizens have run away. That is the ones that leave those. Some of them are dead. Even recently in Uguta, they bombed a lot of places. Even yesterday in the so zone, a sitting monarch was hacked down by you. And you tell me you're the chief security officer of a state. It's unfortunate. That, thank you for bringing okay, that up. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up because I was going to talk about Imo State. Imo State has gradually become a hotbed um, of insecurity. You would call them all sorts of names, terrorists. Um, you'd call them unknown gunmen. Um, I mean, the latest is to sit at home. Um, I mean, I think I heard the Enugu State Governor put out a statement today saying, um, yesterday, uh, urging its citizens to go out and do their businesses. And if, if any of them were caught sitting at home or businesses were seen shot, those businesses or uh, those premises will be reclaimed by government. But the big question is, why are the governors in the southeast allowing for some faceless men to take over the state and cause this level of mayhem? Uh, if they are supposed to be the ones who protect uh, lives and property. I tell you that, uh, that, will, that will prove to you that you cannot, a man cannot give what he doesn't have. The truth is that the incumbent in Imo State, we have tried him for four years, he doesn't have managerial ability that can make peace in Imo State. So we have to bring in another person. And I'm happy the citizenry the leaders of Imo State, they are coming together to say, let us try another person. Because if you have a home that you give somebody to manage for you and you couldn't manage it, the best thing is to quit that person and give, put another manager. Because the, uh, the goodness of a home depends largely on the manager. So I'm 100% sure the candidate of Labour Party, Chief Ikejuku Joseph Ukebu, is the best hand for now to manage the affairs of Imo State and uh, redeem them from the uh, eminent uh, uh, blunder that is uh, that will come more on us if we make any mistake. And that is why somebody like me is pleading with all and sundry to come together. We have a common enemy. We cannot uh, deny that. So mm. let us uh, set aside what is happening in the Labour Party and let us come openly and sincerely uh, face our common enemy and achieve goods for the citizens. Because you cannot say you are running a party and the citizens are crying every day. I mean, it's something that we have to look in what they and know what is wrong. And we know now that the wrong thing is that the government, based on what General uh, 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 Abacha said at the time, the government have a compromise. He said any problem, any fracas, any insecurity that lasts more than 72 hours in a state or in a government, that the government is aware of it and they have compromised. Hmm. So that's what I believe. If the government hasn't compromised, why all these killings for four years now? Hmm. Uh, finally, before I let you go, um, as, as a citizen of Emo State and someone who's from the southeast extraction of this country, what exactly do you think that the governors of these southeastern states are not getting right or overlooking, um, which has continued to, uh, which has allowed for this insecurity to continue? Um, because I mean, the federal government on one side, on one hand, has sent security operatives, soldiers, um, but then, just as you said, there needs to be some form of synergy and cooperation. Sometime last year, the Southeast Governors Forum had a tea party, that's what I'd call it, saying that they were going to deal with the situation in the Southeast. But here we are, um, almost a year down the line, nothing has really changed. What do you think the missing ingredient is? The missing thing is that you cannot run Imo State from Enugu State. You cannot run Enugu State from Imo State. Is every state is peculiar to their problem. Like all these things they are doing, it is different in Imo State, it's different in Enugu State, it's different in Ebony State. The basic truth is that a sitting governor who is the chief security officer of that state should plan the best way to handle his security system and marshal it out. But the basic truth is that they are rumored, they are even rumored in Igmo State that the incumbent is hiring local vigilante from across border to run the state. 
it doesn't have it doesn't work out that way. So let us use our local content, what we have here. In my village, the, the, the village in the head knows almost all the criminals in that village. So you cannot go from to another village to bring people to try that uh, to attract those uh, criminals. I believe that the governor in Imo State, with the, all the security apparatus around him and available to him, he should know who is who and he should know how to control this thing. But when he cannot do it or he has compromised, then we don't have alternative than to bring in another person. We don't have option at all than to bring in another person and let another try. Hmm. And I'm sure Chief Ike of Hockey will be in the candidate, the authentic candidate of Labour Party. We do justice to that. And everybody will be happy after January 2024, swearing in. You know, I, it sounds very political to me, and I don't blame you because you're a politician, to say, oh, you know, everything will change after the elections. What happens in the interim? Just as you said, um, what, what happens to the family of the, the chieftain that was hacked to death? What happens to people who go about their business, they want to open their shop because they want to make an, uh, earn a living uh, and be able to feed their families and then they're beaten and battered and sometimes killed in the process. What happens in the interim to those people? Because you see, we're very um, short-sighted. Everybody's looking at what their own win. What about the general interest of the average emo person or the average person in the Southeast? Because you keep talking about the elections, but in the interim, what are parties like you, or the Labour Party, and other parties willing to do to help the situation right now in the interim, as opposed to waiting till your person is sworn into office, if he gets into that position, and then you can come up with the, let's say, the bright idea. What happens now? This is my question. In fact, after this interview, uh, my team have planned to pay the family visit tomorrow. And uh, the basic truth is this. The sitting governor, the incumbent governor, still has up to November, January to stay in that position. So what we'll be doing is to sympathize with the families and praying to God that at least we'll be remaining. Some people will still remain to that day. Because with rate of it is now, myself that you're saying here, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, even 100% safe, but I know that God has my life. Nobody can take it from me unless you are God. But the basic truth is that we are working hard. It is not one man, it's not my fight alone. Even that family that have lost somebody, would they be happy to lose more people? So all of us must come together. You know, I know it has happened, it has happened. It's very, and it's very unfortunate. Everybody should criticize it. But the basic truth is that to save the remaining people, we are working hard to make sure that everybody come together. Let us leave this... Uh, Stomach infrastructure. He's uh, sharing money. Uh, like they said, uh, even that yes, that the the boy is there. There's one in uh, 247 special assistant. What are they going to do in government house? So the people that have been doing what they what, doing that work, uh, those work since uh, three four years now, they are not doing anything. Okay, circle of them now and bring new people. Uh, this, uh, you see that he's uh, distributing sharing money, uh, our our common patrimony to people that he wants to uh, better their uh, stomach and uh, 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 buy them over. It doesn't work like that. I know that uh, people, I believe that people will still collect those his money and do the need for hmm. Finally, finally, I just want to quickly ask you, um, you can choose not to answer. Um, do you think that if the federal government were to release Namdi Kanu as the court has ordered, it would one way or the other quell the situation in the southeast, or is this beyond Namdi Kanu? Let me tell you another, let me give you another shock. I am not 100% sure that it's IPOB that have been doing this, you know, the unknown government and IPOB, because they have continuously denied that it's not them. Maybe somebody somewhere is uh, putting his own people to scatter the place so that he will, he will be using the crisis to fuel his uh, security vote and uh, the rest of them to cover this money he's spending. Are, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you are you one way or the other accusing the governor of fueling the insecurity in Imo State? Is that what you're accusing the governor of? People have accused him separately. Even the man they call you go, 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 from uh, the data 
uh, uh, south, north and south uh, federal house representative. He has accused him openly. He hasn't come to, go to, to the court to contest it. He said it's him that he has compromised. He's the uh, a problem of uh, our security system in Imo State. Why, why would a governor want to kill his own people? Why, why would a governor orchestrate these level of killings of his own people? To what end? I don't know. I don't know. But what I know is that, like the question you put before, if the federal government should obey the law, the court, and the others that have said releasing and the gallop, at least we will not know definitely if such a thing happens again. Now, no, IPOB, you said it's not you now. We have released your man. Why is this thing still happening? Then from there, even the IPOB can help fish out all these people blackmailing them. But for now, uh, I'm telling you the truth. There is problem in Nemo State. And we must, we must do something about it. And there is nothing best to do than to say this man, you have tried your best and your best is not enough. Go home. Let another take over. Thank you very much. Finally, um, looking at the Tinubu administration, which is 40 plus days in office, um, do you think that he has the wherewithal to um, face squarely what's happening um, in the southeast? And of course, do you think that he will um, pay attention to what Hanese and the rest of the people have been advocating for? Uh, that is the release of um, Namdi Kanu. Do you think that Tinubu will be in a position to do that? Personally, or every man that is saying don't release Namdi Kanu is a, is, a, is a sellout. It's not a, a true son of evil man. Because whatever happened, the young man, if the court has said he's free, why don't you leave him? He's your own court. You set up the court and the court have said release him. Why don't you leave him? Why should they be holding him? That's what we are asking. Whether or Hanese or nobody, the average, any average Igbo man should say release him and the Kalu. One man, a, a tree cannot make a forest. If you release him and the Kalu to Hanese, Hanese can sit him down and say, my son, what is the problem? We can negotiate these things. But everybody knows that he, the, the, the Shabir, uh, uh, Oji Zokalo was crying on, 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 on camera the other day that they have marginalized him. But you see, so every evil uh, citizen has been marginalized. But the truth is that we must come together to forge ahead and okay. fight a normal cause. Okay. If we fight it from left, from right, we might not get there. But if we, unity will stand. So if the, every average evil man will come together and they march to Asurok, I think... Uh, I see why you were listening to them. Okay. No, well, well, in their own side, they have uh, uh, somebody they call, uh, I've forgotten the young man's name, at the time, Igbo or somebody like that. But uh, when he did what he did, the people sat and they released him. So let them release this young man to the Johannes the people who is our cultural uh, organization here. Okay. They can discuss with him and whatever will normalize it. Instead All right. of holding him, who he dies there, it might be another thing. Okay. All right. Well, I want to say thank you. Um, Nze Akujobi Ikechiku Sirio is the Imo State Chairman of the Labour Party. He's a factional chairman of the Labour Party. We want to say thank you for joining us uh, on the conversation tonight. Thank you very much. But I'm not the factional chairman. I'm the authentic Congress produced chairman of Labour Party Imo State okay. who have been restated. Abu okay. removed me out of his malice because I told him the truth. Okay. But Abu Parkin and called me back. So All right. not thank I'm you. not that man in the state now than myself. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming mm -hmm. on the show. We appreciate it. Well, that's it on the show tonight. My name is Mary Anacon. Thank you all for being part of the show. Don't forget, you can play catch up on all of our previous episodes. Just go to Plus TV Africa on YouTube, like, subscribe, and follow all of our programs. Have a good evening.